All right, let's go on to arms. Curls, barbell curls. I was up doing reps with 275 in the barbell curl. Many times we would start out with a weight, with a heavy weight, and do just one rep. Then have them pull off plates and the curl, but just enough that they cannot do two reps. Then pull off plates and do three reps, then pull off more plates and do four reps after that. And so this is how we go up and drill without ever putting the bar down. So basically Arnold is doing a crazy pyramid. If he's doing one rep, he's doing like 95% of his one rep max or whatever, right? Then he's doing two reps, then he's doing three reps. So he's doing a heavy load while holding the bar continuously. So the time and attention is there in the actual rep in the isometric hole, but the overall amount of poundage he's using makes sense for him to use that to grow the muscle very quickly. A lot of us will sit there and take dumbbells or barbells, sit there and do like 20 reps. Or we'll just do too much sometimes. Again, this is Arnold Swartz saying talking about this stuff. I'm not recommending you guys sit there and do one rep maxes on your bicep and then do one going down because we all know that obviously just asking to tear your bicep. So I wouldn't recommend doing that at all, but that makes sense. You're not gonna get used to my training method. I'm gonna have all kinds of tricks up my sleeve. So Arnold Swartz was heavy, heavy, heavy on tricking the muscles. Muscle confusion, pretty sure, really stemmed from him. Like confusing the muscles. Like he was always saying that, like from the beginning when he was doing, you know, what the frick's... A few minutes later. Pumping iron, wow. So what is muscle confusion? Let's go over that a little later, but keep going. Barbell curl to get to create the thickness of the bicep, to do the dumbbell curl on the incline bench, and to do the concentration curl. Because the concentration curl isolated the biceps with the heavy weights, not with light weight, but with heavy weight, but to isolate it and to really concentrate and to create that peak. That peak and that so what he's saying is barbell curl, you're basically fully supinated. So when you're looking at your bicep as a total, that full supination will create the biggest peak in your biceps. If I go from supinated to pronated, you can see how much of my biceps is being used, right? So if I go from here to here, you can see the difference in the peak of my arm, right? So when you're doing a bicep curl from supinated, you're really getting the peak of your bicep, right? If you wanna work your bicep, the long headed plus you wanna work your forearm as well too, hammer curls, okay? That's what you wanna do. Switch between supinated and neutral. And that's what he's saying. And then doing bicep curls isolated, obviously in the preacher does fully isolate your muscle as well too. So these guys had so much knowledge from literally like we need to thank all these dudes because they had to actually like do the work write it down document it somehow visual and then find out like okay this worked okay so if i supinate it works better this way so i'm gonna do a lot of supinate this and literally seeing their bodies change I'm like okay so if i do leg press with my feet in like this i can hit this part of my muscle this part of my leg without having to go on like you know having like you know the internet you know imagine that Going back, even guys like, you know, I remember Greg telling me stories about when he was coming up. Keep pushing forward, go for your dreams. Does that make sense? It was literally trial and error. Anyway, let's keep going. Shoulders, dumbbell presses, barbell presses in the front and in the back. I mean, we always did the rear press behind the neck kind of presses, the military presses the dumbbell press, which was then is now called the Arnold press. So he's talking basically about like doing behind the neck press. I don't recommend doing behind the neck press at all, at all. Um, replace that with overhead press, military press from the top. And now he's talking about doing the Arnold press, which is pretty cool. Arnold loved hitting his upper chest. A lot of the reason why his chest is so developed like that, genetics number one, but two, getting the most out of genetics is basically training the way your body needs to train to bring out those genetics. So. He already had a genetic gift to have this nice, big, full chest from his goddamn neck. Like his chest starts under his damn chin. It starts here. Dude's like, boom. And he's got pecs like this, yeah, right? It was already gonna grow like that, no matter what. But the reason why it grows like that and looks like that is because he trained exactly how he needed to train to make that come out, right? So. All of his movements where he's doing inclines at different inclines and then doing presses 
at different ways. So he's pressing overhead, then he's pressing Arnold. And doing this Arnold press, bring it from here, and he said he would always stretch. And you'll hear him say in this. Uh, because it was a certain way that was done in order to really create the stretch of the front delta to come down with the elbow here, not just to here, but to come all the way down and then to rotate out and go up. So doing the Arnold press, we think about the mechanics of the Arnold press and what is actually hitting. I have start the dumbbell right here. I have to abduct my shoulder, right? He says, flex it down here. You want the full stretch. So he brings the elbow down, which puts tension on that anterior delt. And since your arm is into your body right here, your clavicle head, which helps pull and adduct or pull your shoulder in, is working. So you have this motion here with your chest and this stress on your shoulder. Your clavicle head and your delt head right here is already active. Now you're pulling it out to the side while you're pushing it up. But your delt is now working even more, so we're going, look, chest, delt, chest, delt, chest, delt, 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 delt. And I'm talking about your your lateral head, your front head, your lateral head. And then we're going delt, 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 chest, 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 delts, chest, delts, chest, delts, chest, delts, chest, delts, chest, delts, chest, delts. And then think about that. Boom, you're basically doing, you're basically doing a fly and a press, you know, fly and a press, fly and a press. And he swears by that. Now you can see why his chest looks the way it does. Genetics and then training the way your body should be trained. And that takes a lot of muscle mind connection. That's why I always emphasize technique so much because when you have the muscle mind connection, that means you're building the muscle more efficiently. You're using the fibers for that particular exercise to emphasize that damn muscle. Instead of taking extra muscle from this part and that part and, and all of a sudden, you're dividing up all that extra tension that should be forced onto that isolated muscle. That's why technique is huge. That's why I always coach it. Raises, and especially bent over lateral raises on a bench. That is a 45 degree bench. This is a specialty that I've learned at Vince Gerrandes gym. And he had this cut out in the face where he could still breathe, where you don't have to look sideways. But oh, it's amazing. Breathe. So yo, they had, a, that's awesome. So like doing, one of my favorite moves to do is doing actually 45 degree chest support lying dumbbell rear flies. So yes, you're getting that full, you know, you don't have any momentum standing up. You can fully completely isolate your delt. And I always like to make sure if the bench is like right on my chest, I like to have myself start here a bit. So there's already tension. And then pulling your pinkies out because you're using a lot more of that rear head of your delt, that lateral head, right? So you wanna basically pull this way. And how's the dope thing is that those guys had, I don't know how someone has a thought about that. Like that makes so much sense. Like basically have a hole in the bench, you know, sit there like choking on the weight up here and you're like, you know, and, or you're feeling like the ch your, your chest is, you know, down, like literally you can sit on the bench and keep your face in like this and just sit there and fly. That'd be actually dope. That'd be dope actually. But anyway. you can breathe, but it is 45 degrees and to turn your wrist outward like this and uh, it is a... So yes, turning your wrist out is going to put more emphasis on your rear delts, right? All these things they're trying to tell you to, like why, why do I wanna pour out the glass of water? Why do I wanna pour out? Because when you do this, you're putting emphasis on your rear delt. So basically it's telling you to internally rotate to put the emphasis on that rear head, right? Anyway, moving on to legs. Squats is I think the most important exercise to create thighs, big thighs, squats, rear squats, front squats, leg extensions, lunges, stiff-legged uh, deadlifts, or good morning exercise uh, with, with stiff legs uh, and a lot of leg curls. So th these guys figured it out, obviously. But doing squats is not the best exercise for building big thighs. Now in this, I'm assuming he means by thighs, actually by your quads. Quads, yes but you're gonna get a lot more from leg press for quads or like walking lunges, still getting glutes in there as well too. But a lot of us get things mixed up and think that we're gonna hit quads by doing back squats. Now, when you do front squats, you're getting a lot more emphasis on your quads. So yes, where the bar is in proximity to your midline or the center of mass is gonna have a greater load on where it is. So if we're doing front rack or front squat, goblet squats, you're gonna feel a lot more on your quads, but you're still working a lot of glute, a lot of hamstrings as well too, right? So. Yes and no for that. But everything else, like the exercises that he's saying to do, those are all things that are gonna build very well-rounded legs. And then hammering on the hamstring curls done 
And then doing a lot of like leg press. I don't know why they, this was such a short damn thing. A little bit stiff legs uh, and a lot of leg curls. Then we uh, sometimes in order to shock the body. So again, shocking the body. Okay, so I want to touch on muscle confusion. What is muscle confusion? It's just a way of progressive overload. A lot of times Arnold Schwarzenegger talks about, you know, confusing the muscle. And he explains, you know, the body does understand and know your routine. It does. It knows exactly what you're going to do. It knows you're going to go into the gym and do eight to 10 reps. It knows on Monday you're probably going to do chest. You're going to go from flat bench press to maybe that cool machine that you like to use. Then you're going to maybe do cable flies. You'll finish off with triceps. And your body knows it by its ability to adapt. And then if you don't create some kind of change in the environment, it doesn't need to adapt to anything. So when he talks about confusion, he's basically saying, once I've maxed out what my body can do or has been doing for X amount of whatever, I'm then going to just throw in 20 reps on something. Or I'm going to do, you know, a drop set or I'll do a super set. Those are all ways you can use to help your body push to either failure or just another way of progressive overload, right? That's all he's saying, it's pretty dope. Anyway guys, I thought it was pretty cool to go through it and kind of like, you know, just, this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is what he used to do in the day. Did it make sense? Can I actually follow some of the stuff that he's doing in there for today and actually make sense? Yes, he can. Some things are like, obviously they're old methods that have been like, you know, outdated in certain things, you know? Like even when I started guys, I was banging the weight. I thought that when you had to do flies, you had to bang the weights. I did a lot of those same things. I remember I've been in the gym since I was 11 years old. So I grew up seeing and hearing and doing all the old school things until, you know, the knowledge or the research was there enough for me to actually do different. And here we are today. Anyway, guys, if you liked the video, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share the video, guys. You don't want to pull that tell like it is vulnerable, transparent truth. For coaching, johnachieve.com, guys. My prices will be going up May 1st. So guys, if you want to know what coaching is about, you can book a phone consult. 15 or 30 minutes and at the end of that consult if you feel like you want to go with training whether it's a one-time plan or a continuous coaching i deduct the price of the consult of any plan you pick anyway guys follow me on instagram at underscore johnny underscore send me all your videos for lifting whatever and i'll repost it check out my gym at impact fitness 56 and you know what it is iron sharpens iron progressive overload your life in the meantime keep gym chasing peace